Hi, and welcome to Edinburgh College. We're your student officers this year. I'm Rose, and let me introduce you to Victoria. Hi, I'm Victoria, your VP Activities. Now, if this isn't your first rodeo, then you'll know that there are usually three of us. But unfortunately, Jordan, who is your VP of Welfare, is unwell, so he felt it best if he get a COVID test and self-isolate. So we hope you're feeling better soon, Jordan. Yes, and um, please do the same if you feel unwell. Get a COVID test and self-isolate, and please do contact your lecturers and LDT so they can mark your attendance. As I said earlier, I'm Rose and I'm your student president at Edinburgh College Student Association for this year. But before I tell you about myself and EXA, I want to highlight that we will have a Q&A session at the end. Now, don't worry if your question doesn't appear on the stream. Our team will be answering all questions in the background, try to get back to you as quickly as possible. But if you have any more questions after the stream, please get in touch with us. All our contact details are on our website at exa.scot. EXA stands for Edinburgh College Student Association, so you might hear it referred to as EXA for short. To hear more about how to get involved in your student association, you can watch this video, video hosted by Heidi. Hi everyone, I'm Heidi and I'm a staff member in the Students Association. My role is Representation and Impact Coordinator, which basically means that I work with class reps. And I'm here really to talk to you about some of the opportunities for you to get involved in all the things that we do at the Students Association. So first up, class reps, as I said, that's part of my role and I work really closely with class reps. And the role of a class rep is to make sure that your voice is heard, both in your class, but also across the college. They will gather feedback and they'll share information with us and with your lecturers. They're elected in your class, so we generally elect about two class reps, and that's really so that they can share the load of, of some of the work that they do. There's no experience required, so you'll receive all the training. So even if you've done nothing like it before, you can still become a class rep. And I'm sure there's lots of you out there that would be great at it. It's a really good opportunity to meet lots of other people, um, not just within your class, but also in, in the department or across the college again. All the class rep elections will take place in your tutorial classes. So if you haven't heard anything about this by the October break, please get in touch with your lecturers and say, listen, I really want to be a class rep but I haven't heard anything about it, how can I get involved? Or just get in touch with ourselves and we'll, we'll help you out. If you are a student that doesn't want to be a class rep, make sure you still engage with your class rep and make sure that you keep up to date with all the information that they've got to share. Speaking of keeping up with things and telling us how you're doing, to influence change, we want to hear from students across the college and we want to make sure that your student voice is really heard. We rely on your input and your feedback to make sure that we can make big changes and have a big impact across all the activities that we do and all the things that happen in Edinburgh College. So we run surveys and we run focus groups and we host meetings um, and most importantly we often have prizes involved as well as freebies so it's really worth keeping an eye on the things that we do and staying in touch. Now um, you met three officers just before, um, they are actually working full time in some of the activities that they run, so they've been elected for their second term. You can be a full time officer as well, they were students just like you and um, they stood for election in March and they will be your student officers for this year. Um, so keep an eye on uh, more information about annual elections um, sort of next semester and we can let you know how you can get involved and if you could maybe be the next student officers. Um, but keep in touch uh, in the meantime and please get involved with class rep activities and other surveys and information that we've got running. Thank you. But there are lots of other ways to be involved with your student association, such as getting involved in some fun activities. And with that in mind, Victoria will tell you all about our plans for this year. So thanks, Rose. Hi, my name is Victoria. And as with your other officers, I'm returning for a second year with EXA as your VP activities. So if we look familiar, that'll be the reason. So on that note, I wanted to say to all returning students, hi again, and to everyone who is joining us new this year, it is nice to virtually meet you. So my plans for this year include meeting and interacting with as many of you guys as possible. After the year we've had, I think it's very necessary. So I also want to celebrate and highlight our diverse student community by making sure that when we're hosting events, they're not just fun, but they're also informative and helpful to you guys. 
I've also been working on our societies this year as that plays a huge role in my job. So our societies this year include games society, anime society, um, for film and photography, sorry, um, cooking society, environmental society, and there's probably another one that I think I have forgotten at the moment. However, <laughs> if you would like to know more about our societies, you can pop along to our virtual meet and greets, which will be hosted on Teams this afternoon. So I will be live in the virtual flesh and you guys can feel free to come along and meet me and get started on our first society meeting of the year. Yes, and do also join us on our virtual campus, which you can find on Facebook. Uh, in fact, if you join any of our social media channels this, in the next few days, you'll be in a, with a chance to win at some amazing prizes. So do follow us on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. Yeah, and on our social media channels, you'll also be able to find more about our activities and campaigns, including our Go Green project. And to tell you a little bit more about it, I will introduce you to Claire. Hi, I'm Claire, one of the sustainability officers at EXA, along with my colleague Izzy. Um, and we are delivering our Go Green project, which is funded by the Scottish Government. So there is quite a few different things that we do within this project. The first one is that we're offering class time about climate change and sustainability. Uh, so you might see us in your classes throughout the year and we'll come and talk to you about climate change, sustainability and how these things relate to your course and your future careers, whether you think they might at the moment or not. Uh, we're also here to support you traveling more sustainably as well. So we do that through a number of ways. Uh, one thing is that we'll have bike maintenance sessions going on throughout the year, so keep an eye on our website for dates for that and they'll also be on our social media. We also have bike lights, um, bike bells, high visibility items and things like that to help you walk and cycle more safely, especially when it gets darker into the winter months. Um, we also are going to be encouraging circular economy in the college, so what that means is that we're trying to get less waste um, through a number of different ways. One of them is that we'll have swap shops where you can donate things like clothes, accessories and household items to the swap shop and other students can then take advantage of getting them for free from our swap shop. We'll also be doing a similar thing with community fridges. So we'll get um, things that would have otherwise gone to waste from local super supermarkets that's still totally in date and fine to eat. They'll go into our community fridges and you can then come and take them completely for free for yourself. Um, so keep an eye on them. The first one will be that our swap shop will be at Site Hill to start with and our community fridge will be at Granton, but these will then extend so that we've got both of them on all campuses by the end of the year. Uh, so we'll give updates on them on our website and social media when they're coming to your campus. We also will have events and activities running throughout the year, uh, so they'll be based around a number of different things. Um, a lot of that will be to do with just getting you more aware of sustainability and climate change and things like COP26 that's happening in November in Glasgow. Uh, so do keep an eye out for those as well. Um, we will have all this information on our Go Green page on the website. So it's exa.scot and then there's a bar at the top that has Go Green. Um, so you can go on there to find out a lot more about our activities and the project. And finally, there's also community gardens at our Milton Road and Sighthill campuses. So they are run by our estates team, um, but we have information about those on our website as well. So if you'd be interested in coming along to the community gardens to get involved in growing things, you can do that as well. Um, so other ways you can also get involved this year is through our student job opportunities. So in the Go Green project, we're going to have four, so one per campus. Um, and it's a part time student role where you can come and help us run things like the swap shops and community fridges. Um, so the recruitment for that is live at the moment on our website. So do go and apply if you're interested. There's more information on the page there too. And we'll also be uh, recruiting sustainable, uh, not sustainability, student engagement assistants um, as well. So there'll be two of them coming up. So keep an eye on the website to apply for that as well to get involved with our work at EXA. Uh, finally, if you're maybe not wanting to have the commitment of a job, but you would be interested in getting involved still, uh, you can volunteer with our project as well. So we'll be talking a bit more about that in the afternoon sessions we're running today in our environmental sustain, uh, society chat. So do come along. Uh, there will also be other chats about different societies that we have running this year as well um, after lunch. So do have a look at what those are and um, the officers will tell you a bit more about which ones are running after this. Um, and yeah, just stay involved, as Heidi said, and we look forward to seeing you in some of the society chats after this. So if you want to know more about the job opportunities and the Go Green activities, you can find applications on our website, exa.scot and on our social media channels. 
as we mentioned at the start, Jordan can't be with us today. However, if you ever want to get in touch with him or any of us, our details are all to be found on the EXO website. Now, we know that Jordan has some amazing plans for the year to come, and I know that he's absolutely gutted that he can't be here to tell you about all about them himself. However, the show must go on. So I will try my best to fill you in on his plans for this year. So Jordan's objectives this year include supporting students to get back onto campus after what was a challenging and life altering year for all of us. He's also been working on delivering a calendar of equalities campaigns across the year. And finally, Jordan began work on an objective to support students in crisis last year in his role as president. And I know this is something that he's extremely passionate about and is keen to continue this coming year. A big part of the student association role is to offer support to all students throughout their time at college. Uh, so we are always happy to hear from you, so much so that we have set up a online drop in office. Our drop in hours will be Monday to Friday, 12 till 4 p.m. So if you have any questions or need any help, please do pop in and see us and you can find the link on our website. Now that you've heard all the great plans Victoria and Jordan have for the year, let me tell you about my plans. I'll be working closely with our class reps to deliver training and to get an opportunity to hear about your student experience. I'll also be working closely with the National Union of Students to tackle issues that students across Scotland face, such as lack of access to a laptop or Wi-Fi for study, or struggling financially to pay the bills with the hopes of solving these important issues. But finally, I most look forward to meeting students in the flesh. But enough about us, we want to hear from you and answer any questions you may have. So please drop us a question in the link provided and it will hopefully come up here. OK, so I can see that there's a question here from Alexandra. Are all classes going to be back on campus campus or mainly just practical subjects? So the answer is at the moment, only some classes are going to be on campus and we're hoping that over the term we'll be able to bring in more and more students. It's basically an opportunity to give the younger students a chance to get their uh, vaccine uh, before coming to campus. So yes, at the moment we're restricting it to only certain courses, but hopefully past the October break, going on further into the year, we'll have more and more of you on campus as well as still studying a bit online. Do you want to have a look at another oh, question? Let me see what we've got. So, yeah, we've got a question from Jenna asking, is there a college cycling scheme? So Claire will, has told you about the excellent work of the Go Green team, and there is lots of activities run relating to cycling and sustainability. So check out the Go Green hub at um, exo.scot slash activities slash go green. And she's told you a little bit about that already, and hopefully you know where all that information is to find it for yourself. So. Yeah, and I can see there's another question here about whether you need to wear face masks on public transport. Now, you do have to wear face masks on public transport. I had to do so this morning on the tram, unless you're exempt because of health issues. If you are, what you can do is pick up a sunflower lanyard, which lets people know that you have a hidden disability and that that's why you can't wear a face mask. OK, another question here. So we have a question from an anonymous person asking, what is the support for LGBT plus students? particularly trans students, for example, toilets. So um, as officers, we've got an LGBT group, which is both a social community and a place to influence change if needed. So Edinburgh College is an open and inclusive space, but there's always space for improvement. You can always check out the exit equality statement on our website. Um, in terms of toilets, there are currently separated into men's and women's, as well as a disabled toilet, which you can use if you otherwise identify. Uh, here's another question from Anonymous. I'm wondering if timetables are going to change or will they remain the same for this moment? I can see some gaps in my timetable and I'm worried I have, have them up to date. Now, your timetable links are live links, so they are up to date. But if you're worried about gaps, speak to your lecturers directly to make sure you know what their plans are. But hopefully there shouldn't be any more changes. Here's another question about vaccines. OK, this one is says I have had my second dose, my second vaccine appointment coming up in the first week of classes. Should I fill out a SAM form or contact my LDT ahead of time to notify them of my absence? So this is a great question and we're advising that you should contact your LDT which or your lecturers for the day of your appointment uh, and let them know. And so hopefully you won't miss anything too heavy this year if you're all vaccinated up. <laughs> 
uh, another question here about student cards, and I know we've actually had quite a few people ask about this already, about when will you get them. Yeah. Your student cards will only will be available digitally through my, the My EC app in the next couple of weeks. Remember, you can access lots of student discounts using your student number and student email online. So you don't necessarily need your digital card in order to get all these great discounts. Uh, here's another question about student discounts, actually. Ooh. This question is specifically asking, is there a student discount on rider cards for when the college goes back on to campus? Um, so yes, if you need to, but you do need to go to a travel shop to purchase a student rider card with a proof of your student ID. So some proof of your the fact that you're actually a student is always necessary. <laughs> yeah, and I think that we I do know that Lothian buses are accepting the digital cards right. as well. So Perfect. you can use your digital student card to get your rider card. So what kind of oh, here's a great one for you, Victoria. What kind of activities or clubs are there? So more information can be found on our societies hub. Um, and if you join Teams, which is you're all a member of, um, we are having meet and greets, as I mentioned later on this afternoon from two until four. I will be on Teams and you'll be able to pop in and come and say hi and meet me and meet some other folk that might be interested in whatever course it, or whatever group it is that you want to join. So you can be a complete noob or a complete pro, but feel free to come along. I mentioned some of our clubs earlier. As I said, we had gaming. We have anime, we have film and photography, we have cooking, we have environmental sock, and we have a music sock as well, which is another one. Yeah, I can actually see someone else is asking if you could, how to sign up to the Anime Society, but as Victoria's explained, just come along to the drop-in meet and greets this afternoon, and you can join any of the societies, including the anime one. And I'll see you there. <laughs> so uh, here's another question. Oh, do I need to buy any books if my class is online? Um, good question. I would probably ask your lecturers and LDTs, if there's any particular course materials that you need to buy. So wait until induction and ask them if there's any specific books you need to buy or whether you can just access, assess them through library online. Um, is there any way to change your name and pronouns at college without them being changed on any sort of certificate? So yeah, tricky question. Hi, Ellie. So there's actually something that we're working on with the College Equalities Officer. Students can currently change their details and name through student records but no official policy is in place. If you'd like further guidance and more information, please feel free to get in touch with us at EXA and we'll try and see if we can help you out. Um, oh, I see a wee question asking, what is the social media account called on Facebook? So we are the virtual campus on Facebook, but we also have an EXA Facebook page where you'll find us all. You can also find us on Instagram and Twitter. Our face, our, we're all under EXA online. And for the limited time only when joining, there are those great incentives. So pop on and make sure you join. Yeah, and that follows up with the next question, which is how do we apply for the student engagement assistant role? The applications haven't opened yet, but they will be opening soon. And the best way to find that out is to just keep an eye on our various social medias because we'll advertise the job when it's when we're ready for it. Um, how do you contact your lecturers? Well, you can contact your lecturers through Moodle or Teams when you log on. Um, and yeah, I've lost my train of thought there. Sorry. <laughs> yes, you can contact your lecturers and LDTs through Teams and that'd be the best way to contact them. Uh, do you want to have that? Yep. So we have to join our, no, no. <laughs> we have a question asking what assistance is available for those of us with conditions that make it difficult to manage all this new distance learning technology? So we have loads of support available and we have an actual great support team um, that you can get in contact with. So through learner support, the wellbeing team, and if you stick around tomorrow in a session just like this, the wellbeing team will be hosting a session to talk you through all the wellbeing side of the college. So, or pop on to us on the extra drop in and we can give you more information. We're always happy to help. Uh, here's another question. Do we have an art group yet? Well, we don't yet, but if you do want to be involved in an art group, please do come and get in touch with us. Come along this afternoon and we'll try and get one set up and see if we can get a, a lovely student association art group going. I think that'd be a brilliant idea. OK, uh, OK, I can see some of these questions. I think we've covered most of the questions and don't worry, our team are in the background. They will be answering all those questions for you as well. But uh, that, for that, I think that's enough and it was great to get so many questions from you. 
and do remember to join Victoria this afternoon for society's meet and greet. Yeah. I'm looking forward to meeting you all later on. So we've got lots of excitement about society. So I hope lots of you come along and join me. So, OK, so now that you've heard a little bit about us and the Students Association, it's now time to get interactive and get your brains working. So just for fun, we're going to go through a wee quiz to see how much you know about Edinburgh College and the community of students that you are now a part of. So we're going to be using an interactive app called Menti, so that will be hosted on the screen and feel free to pop on and you can get involved. You can answer questions live along with us. So the code will pop up on the screen. You'll be able to see it and log on. So if you go to menti.com and type the six digits, I think it is the six digit code that's on the screen and you can get involved that way through and we'll see your answers coming up. But it's just for fun, so don't worry if you don't know. <laughs> So yeah, so let's get the big picture for first of all. There are 26 colleges in Scotland. Name them. OK, <laughs> only joking. There are 26 colleges in Scotland and Edinburgh College officially covers the region of Edinburgh and the Lothians. So on average, how many college students do you think there are in Scotland each year? Um, we'll just watch to see you answering the question. OK, I'll ask one more time. So, an, so on average, how many college students do you think there are in Scotland each year? I'm just waiting to see people respond to that question. 100,000? 175,000 or 250,000? Ah, mm. the results are coming We've in now. What's the results coming in? Mm. That's very exciting. <laughs> Oh, well, I could see some of you got the answer right. The actual answer is 250,000. Yes, that's right. You're joining a, a quarter of a million other people in Scotland as college students wow. this year. And to put that into perspective, this is more than the entire population of Aberdeen and Stirling combined. It's quite something. Yeah. <laughs> so Edinburgh College is one of the largest colleges in Scotland. So with that in mind, how many students do you think we have each year? So um, the options should be coming up. The options are 10,000, uh, approximately 15,000, maybe 20,000 or possibly even 25,000. Not sure. What do you think? Oh, and the results. Oh, it's a bit oh, of a split. Much more varied. Yeah. Oh, they're still coming. They're still coming. Still coming in. Oh, this is very exciting. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. OK, so yeah, in fact, in recent years, we actually had slightly more than 25,000 students. That is bigger than the entire population of Bathgate or Musselburgh. Wow. So hopefully we all know that Edinburgh College is made up of four main campuses. In alphabetical order, we have Granton in the north of the city. Middle Lothian, which um, is in Mid Lothian, <laughs> Milton Road in the east, and Site Hill in the west. They are spread out across the city, with the largest distance between the two campuses being Granton and Mid Lothian, about 11 miles away from each other. So, what do you think is the average travel distance for students to our campuses? Is it one mile or less, five to six miles, or 10 to 12 miles? Uh, or, even or more, more than, than 12, 12 miles. miles. Yeah. So yeah, what do you think is the average travel distance for students to our campuses? Is it one mile or less, five to six miles, 10 to 12 miles or more than 12 miles? Uh, yeah, I can see you responding and I'm so glad that so many of you are getting involved. It's really brilliant to see this working. Yeah. And who worrying. are the clever ones that get the <laughs> correct answer? Who's getting the gold star? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah. Wow. So, lots yeah. of you seem to be on the ball. Lots of you seem to have been listening quite a lot. <laughs> yeah, and the answer is more than 12 miles. So yeah, Edinburgh College is a regional college with most students living within five miles of their chosen campus. So the average distance to travel is six miles. So we've had lots of information about the, from the Go Green team about ways of walking, cycling and making use of public transport for those fairly short journeys. So hopefully you can make the use of that. Yeah, college is often seen as an obvious next step for many young people after school. In fact, more than one in five 18 to 19 year olds in Scotland go to college on full time courses. So with that in mind, what do you think is the largest age group of students in Edinburgh College? Is it 16 to 20 to 19 year olds, 20 to 24 year olds 
or 25 and over. I can see we've got lots of responses in already. Lots of people. Bit of a clue, I'm, we're both in the 25 and over, aren't we? Yeah, we actually, we were talking about this. 25 and over is the group that we would both be in in X Factor now, which <laughs> kind of strikes me a little hard. <laughs> I wasn't quite prepared for that one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and that's right, the largest uh, age group of I don't students. think everyone all got at that time. I think there was a, a wee bit of a, was it a, bit a divide, of a, yeah. Oh, yeah. Lots of people assumed it was the younger group. Uh, yeah, well, I'm afraid to say it is the largest group is the 25s and over. Uh, the <laughs> college, uh, and we actually make up 40% of the college student body. Uh, the average age of all college students in Scotland is 21, though. Many students come straight from school. Some even do both at the same time. But for most students, they choose to come to college in their 20s and beyond. Yeah, and Edinburgh College offers a huge range of courses over four broad faculties. So that basically just means that we have four academic departments in the college. So we have creative industries, which I was a member of. They're the best one. We have engineering and built environment. We have health, well-being and social sciences. And we have tourism, hospitality and business. So with that in mind, with the four faculties, which of these following courses do you think is not available to study at Edinburgh College? Is it police studies? Is it wellness therapies? Is it computer game development? Paramedic science? Or is it uh, electric and hybrid vehicle maintenance? Or interior design? Or wine and spirit studies? or radio and podcasting. So which of these courses do you think is not available to study at Edinburgh College? OK, so that was a bit of a naughty trick question because <laughs> they're all actually available. You can study any of those courses at Edinburgh College. They're, these are just some of the more than 700 courses that are available here at Edinburgh College. And I'm sure there are loads of people tuning in today studying. So hiya. Hi, still got them coming in. People still think. <laughs> so, right. So what about other demographics in the college? Male or female? Disabled students? Further or higher education courses? The last one we know has caused quite a lot of confusion already. So let's start there. Higher education courses include HNC, HND and degree level courses. And further education courses include Access, NC, NQ and NPC courses. So, what percentage of courses are higher education courses at Edinburgh College? Do you think it's 5%, 15% or 25%? So we'll let you get your chance to answer. Oh yeah, I can see a lot of people responding. That's great to be involved. Do you know what? I think this time around, most of you got the right answer. Yeah. It's 25%. Yeah, more than a quarter of our courses are HE level, which is the same level as most university undergraduate courses. So what about the split between those who identify as male and female? So what do you think? How many identify as male or female? I'll give you a few minutes to answer. There's an option three, which I wasn't aware of, but great. <laughs> Yeah, we weren't aware we'll of that. We'll see. <laughs> oh, it's Another almost change. like an even split well, of how quite, people yeah, are responding. People are taking it quite evenly. Well, Which, yeah. This one has a lot less answers. People are not so it sure is kind anymore. Of close. Not so sure, but very close. Yeah, it is kind of close. It turns out it's just 52% of Edinburgh College students uh, identify as female. So we're so it got slightly there in the more end. than it switched half in the end. <laughs> of uh, the college um, student body. So this does vary heavily from course to course, as you can understand. So finally, what about the number of disabled students at Edinburgh College? Um, we've had some questions about disabled students, so we were just wondering what percentage of our students do you think declare a disability? Is it 5%, 10% or 20%? So we'll let you get your answers in. So we've had a wee bit of discussion and as I said, the wellbeing team will be on tomorrow with a wee bit more chat. So. And the answers are coming in. So I think we'll mm. go. Popular answer seems to be 10%, yeah. but is that correct? Actually, the most recent statistics at Edinburgh College show that 23% of students are declaring a disability, with the vast majority relating to mental health. 
So whether you have a diagnosed disability or just are struggling with your mental health throughout your course, the good news is that you're not alone and that there are loads of people and resources right across the college that can help you. We have learner support, the wellbeing team, counsellors, or even ourselves at EXA can help. So you'll be hearing more from these teams directly in the live sessions tomorrow, so be sure to tune in then. So the number one thing we want to get across to you is that you should never be struggling on your own. We're here to help you and you are now part of a massive community of loads of students and loads of people willing to help. So we hope you've enjoyed our little quiz and that you've managed to learn something new that you didn't already know. Yeah, and thank you so much for joining us today. Um, please do remember to come back tomorrow at 10 a.m. and you'll meet Jack again. He'll introduce you to the wellbeing team, your guidance team and the LDTs. And of course, Victoria. Yeah, I'm looking forward to meeting some of you soon at our society sessions tonight. And remember to join our social media challenges at uh, channels or even to win some amazing prizes. So thank you for listening to us today. Thank you for your time. And yeah, we hope to see you all soon, hopefully in the flesh or even online. So we will see you soon, guys. Thank you for today.